Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Dan Connor, Superintendent of Schools, and I'm joined with Jason Carter, our Assistant Superintendent of Schools. And we are pleased to be here tonight. This is the first of three of our uh, called town hall meetings. Um, and we want to thank everyone before we start for getting that information to us, your questions. Um, uh, up until yesterday, we received questions. Um, I want to thank our, our administrative team. I want to thank Mr. Carter. I want to thank all the folks who really took the time and the effort. And this, as I'm sure you're all well aware, it's a, just a real busy time of year with everyone trying to figure out where we're going to be uh, come to September 1st, what's going to happen, our kids coming back to school. Uh, there's a lot going on, and uh, we hope to clear some of that up tonight. Uh, we hope to make even things a lot clearer next week when we get back to you. But so uh, without further ado, let's start with our questions. And I am going to read the first question. And the first question is, can I request a full remote learning option for my children? My youngest sibling is an immune compromised. And the answer to that, sir and ma'am, is yes. Yes, after the first trimester in marking period, or you can defer the district. Uh, so yes, after the first trimester and or marking period. That answer I gave you is the second part of that question, which is if you choose remote learning, you have to stay remote learning for the whole year. And the answer is no. If you're elementary, it's trimester. If you're middle school or high school, it's quarterly. So let me back up again. I'll answer the, both of those questions. The first one, can I request a full remote learning option? The answer is yes. Um, if you choose remote learning, do you have to stay remote learning for the whole year? The answer is no. Trimester for elementary, quarterly for, for uh, middle school, high school. And I'll look to Mr. Carter now for the next question. Thank you. The next question, my son is starting high school in the fall. How do we know what the syllabus will be? How do we get textbooks? Where do we find contact email for the All of our emails in district are first name, dot, last name. So for instance, my email address is jason.carter at gcsny.org. You can email your principal regarding the remote learning option if you so choose. Uh, and I also like to remind you that there was a survey um, asking that very question as the first question on August 6th. That will be closing out at some point this evening. However, we are looking to extend that so that we can receive um, more answers or rather uh, be made aware of more parents' choices moving forward as this information is disseminated. Uh, as far as the high school or even uh, middle school and class information, we expect that that would be shared at the classroom level by the classroom teacher, um, you know, upon entry, first day of school, first day of class. Textbooks would be handed out in the class if needed. If it is for a remote learning situation, uh, we would probably have those in the main lobby. And of course you can call in and we can have everything organized for you for pickup. If the building principal so choose, they can also organize um, a dissemination of texts if necessary. Um, again, you can contact your email, first name, dot, last name, if necessary, or fill out that survey, which should close this evening. Mr. Connor. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, my next question is, what about offering to parents a full five-day normal school option? Take a poll and actually find out with the real numbers how many parents will actually send their kids instead of not giving that option at all. Hey, it's a great question. And all of these, by the way, the majority of them are terrific questions. I, I really appreciate all your time and effort. However, you need to know that our plan was developed from many conversations that had a large number of stakeholders. The feedback we received from literally not dozens, but close to a hundred 
volunteers was critical in our role and our decision. The district also sent out a survey to parents in the community asking parents, what do you prefer, hybrid or remote? So here we are, that's why we came back to and we're, we're at the uh, hybrid model. Uh, so uh, I appreciate the question, but once again, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of time, uh, a lot of good feedback, a lot of, a lot of great questions, uh, a lot of good dialogue. I sat here, I was part of that, that grand finale that night when all sub, six subcommittees came together and they collected that information from all over our district. Guys did a fabulous job, but um, that's how we got to, to our hybrid model or remote model. Thank you, Mr. Carter. What is the process if I want my child to learn full-time remotely? Uh, so just to summarize once again, of course you can fill out that summary or you can email your building level principal. Um, one of the other pieces here that I'd like to address, we just we weren't quite sure what um, the question was exactly asking. Um, you know, our goal with the remote learning process is to have this uh, mostly live while the children are at home, um, a part of the classroom. We're working out the finer details right now uh, with some upcoming meetings to, again, address the finer details. But our goal is to provide as much um, live instruction that would try to provide the most authentic classroom experience possible through remote learning. The other piece of that would be, you know, what does the schedule look like in a remote learning experience? And most likely we will be adhering to the, the building level and classroom level schedules at the elementary and secondary levels. Okay. Good, Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, I have the next question. My child needs to drop a class. How do I go about this? Are the guidance counselors available to drop the class and talk about my child's schedule? Okay, the answer to that is you need to email your child's guidance counselor with a request and they will follow up. And trust me, you'll get a terrific quick turnaround I've been in every building uh, in the last couple of days. I do know firsthand that our guidance people, uh, many of them are back in the office, of course, with this whole uh, pandemic and uh, hybrid model and putting schedules together uh, for both students and teachers. Uh, it's been a challenging time, but if you call, uh, just leave a message. Somebody will get right back to you and uh, I'll, move the next question to Mr. Carter. Is there a final date that we have to submit a letter to the principal if we choose remote learning? Uh, so again, the initial survey that was sent out on August 6th asked for the 13th to be utilized as a deadline. However, uh, we've chosen to extend that deadline so that families can make the best decision possible uh, with more information being provided. Uh, we will release that deadline, but for now, please note that you do have the opportunity to continue to, to think about this and to make the best decision possible. Uh, we are still accepting responses. Okay, my next question is, your plan indicates that I must write a note indicating that I have opted for my child to do all remote learning. Who will I email my decision to? What is the deadline to submit this? And I'm gonna ask Mr. Carter to step in and answer that because we, we've we been talking about this almost right up until our meeting here today. So Mr. Carter, will you help me out please? Sure, so we're, we're looking to extend this once again, probably out uh, more toward the end of next week and we will be releasing a school messenger notification to all of our families. Um, but as I had said previous, um, please note that you still have time think this through uh, so that you are able to make the best decision possible on behalf of your children and your family. Uh, and moving forward to one of the last questions here with remote learning, how long will the remote learning option be for high school and Scottstown Avenue school? Is it a trimester, a quarter, or a semester? What are the exact dates for each school? Uh, so again, with our elementary school, Scottstown Avenue and Goshen Intermediate, we will be operating uh, with decisions being made 
for an entire marking period and then revisited if there are special circumstances uh, that necessitate a further conversation um, as we are within a, a, a trimester or a marking period, we will certainly have that with our families once again, uh, with the best interests of our students in mind. Uh, the exact dates for each school um, right now, as far as the end of trimesters and the end of the marking periods, we are in the process of finalizing that calendar uh, and we will be sure to notify families as soon as we have that date through school messenger and other means of communication. Okay, so we're, we're going to go to hype right now, right? Yep. Okay. Oops. I'm having a little technical difficulty here. So if I can have Mr. Carter come over, I seem to be frozen. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Absolutely. Okay, my first question for everyone here tonight under the hybrid model is why would we close down completely on Wednesday and waste the day of the week where our kids could get instruction? Well, it's a good question. Um, but it's much more than just having all our students in with this huge move and transition into this new way of educating our kids. Half of them here, half of them at home. There's plenty of professional development that needs to take place. Uh, we will continue to work with our staff, answering questions, addressing concerns that they might have. At the same time, we will have all our students on a remote level as far as, as far as instruction in the AM. So once again, another really good question, um, but boy, uh, we're finding that, you know, getting our folks back, our people are gonna need that at least two or three hours every week, our staff with our principals, uh, Mr. Carter, myself, to be able to get together, uh, answer questions, uh, express our concerns, and keep keep things moving smoothly. So that's the answer. Mr. Carter. If a child is a part of the hybrid plan and the parents decide they want to pull them out solely to do remote, are they allowed to do so? So in this scenario, we realize that many things can transpire during the course of a marking period or a trimester uh, we, un we understand that parents uh, must make the best decision for their children and their families. And we as an administrative team are certainly fine with that. However, we would ask that once this decision is made, uh, that we stick with the decision that was made throughout the remainder of the marking period or trimester, uh, rather than having students coming back and forth through multiple models, which will help us to better manage our cohorts and our groupings. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah. All right, next question is, what will recess look like during the day at school at lunchtime? Well, the good news is yes, we, we plan to get our kids outside. We know that that's an important part of the day. They need to get out, get fresh air. Uh, they need to get some energy, exercise. Uh, we also realize too that there are some limitations on using those uh, swings, those, those um, climbing bars, jumping bars, whatever. Uh, we're probably going to limit any use to those or on those, but um, cer certainly practicing, you know, social distancing. And um, we want our kids to go out. We want them to get fresh air. We want them to get some exercise uh, because we see that as a real important part. Our teachers do, our principals do. So yes, we will have recess and it will, uh, it, hopefully weather permitting will happen every day. Next question, why are students in grades K-2 only doing in-person learning two days per week? 
while other districts are doing much more than that. So we understand uh, that that was certainly a concern throughout our community as it was for us here on the leadership team. Uh, and please keep in mind that our plan was developed uh, with a great amount of uh, input through surveys, uh, stakeholders having the opportunity to respond in writing to many of our focus questions and also through um, facilitating many of our um, stakeholder group meetings that were broken down into um, various um, focus points. We, we tried very hard to get our K2 in uh, at, a, at a greater frequency. However, uh, there were many factors that played into that decision, including um, transportation uh, and spacing within our buildings and classrooms. Um, we feel at this point in time that this is certainly something that we can offer uh, and provide a great education for our students in K2, both with in-person uh, and remote instruction at home. Next question. Has the district discussed postponing the opening two weeks from Labor Day so that vacationers have the chance to quarantine for two weeks prior to sending their children? And all I can tell you right now is that there is a lot of discussion that's I know it's taken place around Orange County. I'm part of that superintendent's group that we talk. We were talking almost every day at three o'clock and now our meetings are, you know, twice a week at three o'clock. A lot of discussion about things like this. Uh, I know that Monday night, uh, knock on wood, I am looking uh, at making that the announcement for what that first day looks like for staff, when that will be, and also for students. Uh, before I do any of that though, uh, we have a lot of work to do. I wanna get, get our heads together again with our administrative team. Uh, I wanna talk with our um, GTA union leadership and uh, get everybody on the same page. And of course, uh, communicate what I'm gonna do with the Board of Education. So stay tuned for more. I'll uh, have some good news for everybody. Uh, uh, this board meeting, uh, that'll be Monday night. Uh, so I should have an announcement for you all at that, at that time. Thank you. Due to many parents opting to go fully remote, is there an option to have my child attend five days a week? With less kids in the classes, it may give opportunities to fill the empty seats and still allow for social distancing. So unfortunately, at this time, five days per week is not an option that we are able to provide. Uh, we, we certainly understand that many parents will opt to go fully remote, and this actually gives us an opportunity to balance our groupings, uh, the A to K and the L to Z groupings. Uh, and right now, our administrative teams are working diligently with their, their guidance staff uh, to, to balance those groupings to allow for uh, proper social distancing and to minimize numbers within the classroom. Um, also, at the secondary level, uh, there are many things to consider by way of electives um, and other variations within the schedule. So we feel like balancing the A to K and the L to Z, um, rather than allowing for five days per week, uh, is much more beneficial for all. My next question is, is when will be notified, when will we be notified of who our children's teachers are and what their teachers teach as far as a daily schedule, what that will look like. And we would like to understand the daily schedule when the teacher is assigned versus waiting until orientation in September. Well, uh, once again, there is so much in the works right now. Uh, we have our guidance uh, counselors working uh, pretty much uh, around the clock here. They're dotting the I's, crossing the T's, getting all, making up their class lists. Uh, we're working, doing our best to accommodate as many families and maintain small cohorts each day. Uh, once again, it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. Uh, I congratulate, com commend our, uh, our guidance people, our guidance director, our administrators in those buildings doing a terrific job. Uh, just be patient a little bit more and I'm, I'm sure that um, you know, you'll be able to make that call to them soon. 
So stay tuned for more. Thank you. When will, when will we be notified of who students' teachers are and what their teacher's daily schedule will look like? We would like to understand the daily schedule when the teacher is assigned rather than waiting until orientation in September. So th this, this kind of piggybacks on a few other responses. Um, as we had mentioned, our administrative team, along with um, those members of um, the, the counseling staff, we are really trying to, to balance those cohorts to keep everything um, you know, to the, to the um, smallest population possible to be safe and, and to do things under CDC guidelines. Um, and in order to take great care to allow for that, uh, it may take more time than usual. Uh, we just want to remind everyone that, you know, what we are trying to do is to also work with our families that um, are also working in conjunction with other families to allow for proper childcare accommodations, et cetera. And with that being said, it is taking a little longer for us to balance those cohorts and to allow for the flexibility that we would really like uh, to help families out with. Our goal is to get this information out as we normally do um, toward the, the later part of August or the later part of this month. Um, I don't have a definitive answer at this point for you, but please know that we are working diligently to get it done quickly for you. Okay, my next question is, will both my children be supplied with computers, seeing as we will be remote learning on the same way, on the same day, or they will both be remote learning on the same day? The answer is yes. Yeah, the district um, certainly will, um, right now we're, we're checking, we're surveying, Families, parents, students, uh, are they in need of a Chromebook? Um, I know our technology department has done an excellent job. And students that need a Chromebook, boy, we're going to do our best to supply them with that Chromebook. So, okay. How many students will be in a classroom at a time? So everything that we are doing uh, is within CDC guidelines uh, with proper spacing. Of course, our goal is to have less than 15 in a class. And again, we are working on balancing out the A group and the B group to allow for the most space in between students while utilizing the most available space within each classroom, knowing that some classrooms are larger than others, smaller than others. Um, we do anticipate less than 15, and that is what we are working on, once again, diligently. Which group are we moving to next, Mr. Carter? Uh, attendance. Attendance, okay. Folks, what we're trying to do tonight is that there were a number of questions from across the board and quite a few different areas, and we're, our effort here tonight is to uh, reach out and take a few questions from each of those groups. Some of you probably heard more questions from remote or hybrid, but we do want to touch on the other categories as well, because we know they're important to you as parents and, and to your children. Okay. So we are on attendance and I am looking at, will mandated quarantine be considered absences or can the children participate in remote learning during those two weeks? Okay, the answer is going to be yes. They can, they can participate in remote learning. And I would hope they would not be considered absences. That, um, that's the reason, and hopefully our, our programs in our system have come a long way since last spring. And that's through the efforts of um, a lot of teachers and and our tech people and uh, the commitment our Board of Education has made along with our administration. Um, the program that students had here and what they went to school with last spring is gonna look a whole lot different, feel a whole lot different. And I think it's great for kids. So I'm excited about what we're gonna roll out here. And, um, but yes, uh, 
if you're for some whatever reason quarantined for two weeks, um, you're going to be able to do your uh, studies re uh, remote learning by yourself. Mr. Carter. So there, there weren't many questions that came in uh, regarding technology, but I do think it plays a large role uh, in the hy hybrid model and remote learning model. So I just wanted to briefly summarize uh, where, we, where we are right now uh, with technology. Uh, many of you had seen a school messenger notification go out today on behalf of the Goshen High School regarding Chromebook distribution. Um, you will see many other notifications going out shortly. Our goal here is to provide a Chromebook uh, for every single person that needs one, and we do have enough devices in our district to do so. Um, we are also working right now toward a one-to-one -to -one distribution, device-to-student one-to-one distribution uh, with further details to follow. Uh, I would say we will utilize more than likely the last week of August and throughout that first week of September uh, if we do get into a larger scale collection and distribution for the purposes of uh, uh, any repairs that may be needed, uh, sanitation, and again, distribution. Um, there was a question about access, Wi-Fi access. So according to our surveys, the larger majority of uh, our community members of our students stated that they do have Wi-Fi access at home that is adequate for remote learning or hybrid learning. Um, with that being said, we still are aware uh, that we do have individuals without Wi-Fi access in their homes. Uh, we have worked with our, our technology department to acquire right now somewhere around uh, 40 mobile uh, Wi-Fi hotspot devices. So obviously at this point in time, we do have a limited amount. However, uh, with a request that comes in and working with our building level administrators, we will be able to meet the needs of, of those families that do not have uh, Wi-Fi access at home through the distribution of a mobile hotspot. Um, more information regarding requests and acquisition of the hotspots uh, will follow this meeting as well. I, I wanna make a few comments about our technology and because I do not want these to go unnoticed or missed that um, our Board of Education being the visionary group that they are, have made a tremendous commitment toward in this district and technology. I, you know, I dare say that I know for a fact that our tech department and what we have available, hardware, software, programs, and the job that people do, that our teachers in our classrooms, <clears throat> um, I know for a fact that maybe only to Middletown, um, you know, I think we're second in all of Orange County for what we have available. And that's a true testament to seven people who sit there twice a month and make sure that there's always that commitment in each year's budget toward improving and upgrading uh, and advancing our, our technology department. So. You know, we got a great board. They're doing a good job. Uh, and they certainly are making the commitments and you should be thrilled if you have children in this district and know that um, we're not just ordering 600 Chromebooks and hoping they arrive before school starts. We've already got them. And we've got people uh, that can certainly uh, fire those up and get them in place. So it uh, makes me proud to know that we have kind of district that we have in the commitment by our, our folks. So are we move into transportation. Sounds good. Okay. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about transportation. And um, we have about 82 buses that run a year. And we know this year there's going to be some challenges. And by the way, thank you for all those people out there who completed their survey. Hey, completing those surveys are incredibly helpful for central office, building principals, um, you know, middle managers, be it our transportation supervisor. It's so important to know and have a good handle on how many students are going to be bused to and from school. Right now, we're probably looking at about two thirds percentage of our students. That's quite a few. 
uh, down slightly from what the number is normally that students at right to a from school, but still a lot higher than I thought. Now, those numbers, of course, could change as we get closer to that first day of school. And don't forget, I hope to announce that, that first day for all students, staff, then students, Monday night. So stay tuned for more on that. If we have a 62 passenger bus, probably at the very, very most, we're gonna be able to be about 50% capacity. So you might say, hey, you better hope for lots of families, brothers, sisters, brothers, sisters, sisters, they can sit together. Uh, otherwise, you gotta space them. You gotta space them six feet apart, socially distanced. Uh, and uh, we've gone on there. Uh, Director, uh, Transportation Director Karen Wells done a great job in doing all the measurements. And uh, we know that probably we can't exceed much more than 50% of that bus capacity. So uh, we'll gear up for that. Um, Mr. Carter. All right. So we did have uh, a question regarding the sanitation, sanitizing the classroom spaces and other areas within the building. How are the custodians going to clean and dis disinfect the entire school for a new group of students the following day? There doesn't seem to be enough time. Uh, so Jim Riley and Buildings and Grounds have worked very hard um, to come up with a, a plan that accounts for the number of workers on the AM and PM shift and also all the spaces throughout the buildings that will be utilized um, by teachers and students. The plan as it stands is to continue the, the normal daily routine and when the building's empty to utilize um, large um, aerosol diffused disinfectant machines. Uh, at that point, once everything is sprayed down, uh, all surfaces will be wiped thoroughly. And again, this is completed in addition to the regular maintenance schedules during the AM and PM shifts. Um, the regular maintenance during the day is uh, right now, of course, planned to continue throughout every day. Good. Meals. All right, we are looking at meals now. Uh, I'm sure you're all wondering, <laughs> hey, if we have to be socially distanced, how and where, where are these kids gonna eat lunch? Um, what type of meals will be offered? And speaking with our food service manager, uh, he believes that his intention is to begin with cold meals until schools and his staff get the systems needed to get the food to classrooms on a timely basis. Hey, this is no easy task. What well, used to be walk them down. By the way, if you haven't been to our high school, got a beautiful cafeteria up there. But no, all our buildings, uh, instead of classes and kids praying down the cafeterias, why? it's looking like we're gonna be feeding kids right in classrooms. So, uh, and we'll have to space ourselves. We'll space them uh, socially distanced. So, uh, Mr. Carter. Where will children eat their lunch and how will social distancing be enforced? So the plan as it stands is to have children eat their lunches in their classroom at their own desks, which means that the classroom itself has already been set up to allow for proper distancing. Um, there should be minimal travel within the classroom. Um, we don't feel as though we can't meet uh, the requirements for proper social distancing of lunches in the classroom. If we do get into a situation where we have to modify lunch spaces, of course we will do so in generally larger areas with proper social distancing in mind. Uh, and, and proper planning ahead of time. My next question is, okay, we talked about where children, where are children eating lunch? And can students bring lunch from home? Are there any guidelines of what foods can be bought from home? Yes, there are. 
And we do not believe that we can stop food from coming from home. However, we need to remind all our parents out there that we have many students with food allergies and we have to be sensitive to that. So we'll work closely with everyone. Uh, and we just ask that our students be uh, sensitive and cognizant of that. And um, but can they? Can they bring in their lunches from home? The answer is yes. And um, we just have to be aware of what those foods, food allergies are around us. Um, would you like to go to any other questions? I've got to clear this off my board if I could. Can I get that off? Yeah. <clears throat> Ms. Pitt O'Connell. Just click on it. Oh, there you go. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I'll ask another question and then we'll give an answer. We'll keep going for you folks. Uh, we've got some time here. During school meals, children are, not, are they or are they not required to wear masks? And how will you socially distance at lunch? Well, we understand that deaths would be arranged to meet the criteria for social distancing and therefore while eating at their desk will be far enough apart to alleviate or certainly uh, keep our students socially distanced from each other. So, so we did have uh, a few questions regarding masks uh, and bell schedules and hallways, especially at the secondary level. Um, will the middle school and high school have a staggered bell system to prevent all of the children from being in the hallways at the same time? Uh, for example, having each team set to a different hall passing time. Uh, so I will tell you that our administrative teams at both the middle school and high school uh, have done a great job of exploring many options, uh, all while trying to maintain um, somewhat of a, a, a regular day-to-day -day operation within the halls, although of course we understand the circumstance. Um, the bells as it stands today will not be staggered. Um, what we were trying to do is again, create more of a smooth flow throughout the hallways and avoiding backlog situations. Um, what we have done is to create single directional hallways with proper signage on the floor uh, therefore, you know, all students will be traveling in, in one direction in particular hallways uh, while maintaining proper social distancing. Um, also, staircases have been designed uh, with proper signage for those that are designated as strictly stairwells to go up, uh, whereas others are strictly for coming down. We do plan to utilize our student supervisors and other faculty members uh, within our hallways to um, monitor wearing of masks so that students are acting appropriately with wearing masks uh, and also maintaining the proper social distancing. There is a large component of education here for our students that is needed. Uh, so of course, as you would imagine during the first weeks of school, uh, there will be constant discussion regarding the importance of wearing a mask and also the importance of following the signage that you find on the stairwells um, and the floors. Well, folks, um, I just want to take this opportunity once again. I want to thank all of you out there for sending those questions in. Uh, what we've tried to do is we had many questions that were very similar in nature and certainly to each other. And uh, Mr. Carter and I uh, spent quite a bit of time in trying to group those. So I do hope you heard at least part of your question. Um, and I do hope that uh, any of our audience out there that has another question or you need more information and, you know, some of the areas we're going to get into next week, we're going to talk about mental health and not just for our students, but for our staff as well, because boy, it's been tough. It's been tough on everyone. And we know it's particularly been tough on the families out there. So uh, in moving forward, uh, keep those questions coming. Uh, it's been great. I've enjoyed this time tonight. Uh, and uh, 
know that we will continue to keep that flow of information coming to you. Understand folks too, one very, very important thing to remember here. This is a very fluid situation. Uh, what looks to be rock solid today uh, could change tomorrow. And we all know the governor um, in his ultimate wisdom from time to time as cases start to flare up uh, in certain areas why he will send out a new directive. But for now, uh, he's left it up to school districts, come up with their own model. I wanna congratulate our district for getting that, that model and that, that all that work that needed to go into that, that application to be sent up to Albany. Uh, that was over two weeks ago. And uh, you were one of the districts that uh, didn't meet the deadline. So this guy to my right played a big role in that along with his administrative team. And uh, they did a great job. So, but um, understand that we will uh, we'll be as transparent with all of you as we possibly can. Um, we are anxious to hear your questions. Uh, we know that not everything we do is going to meet with 100% approval. But boy, the people that sat on those committees, and we're 100 plus, I was particularly impressed with, I had the pleasure of listening to their summaries. They did a fantastic job. Um, so with all of that being said, uh, I feel like we're in as good as place as we possibly can be. Um, we are anxious to come back and meet with you next Wednesday. And so I wish you all the very best. I want to thank Mr. Carter for being here tonight and uh, bringing his expertise to the table. And uh, I want to wish you all the best. Be well, be safe. Good night, folks.